those of you who don't know me, I'm William Timone, Provost. I want to welcome everyone this morning, and it's great to see the faculty back. Hope you're all rested up and ready to flip the switch and get started on the school year. Uh, you can be sure, however, that um, Tracy Morris and the student services staff have been working hard to get students in the doors and into your classrooms. So they're about to fall asleep, probably. But I'll leave that up for later. OK, we're going to start with some music this morning. We have the ICC Vocal Jazz under the direction of Julie Clements. Please welcome Vocal Jazz. Uh, like they said, we are members of ICC's Vocal Jazz. Um, and the first song that we have for you today is kind of strange, but yet kind of funny, um, and seems a little appropriate for the new school, school year that's coming ahead of us. Um, it's a parody of a popular pop tune, and so we just hope you guys enjoy it. It's about uh, some little grammar issues that today's society has. So we hope you guys like it. Everybody, shut up. Yeah. Uh. some script and words to follow that, but I guess I'll just say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Marty Blutzo. I'm Vice President of Human Resources. 
Before welcoming our new staff and faculty, I want to give you a couple of updates. You've probably seen the new named badges around campus. We mailed information to you about the badges a couple of weeks ago. And for many of you, your badge will become the key to your office or your classroom. Your dean or your supervisor will be able to help you with learning how to use your badge to access rooms. Know that the badge is also your identification card for the library, and you can put cash on it for our cafe. Last year was a particularly tough time for the ICC family. Many of our staff were impacted by the tornadoes in Washington and East Peoria. Others had unexpected deaths of, or illnesses. ICC has always been a generous family, and to help focus that generosity, we've created a benevolence fund through your donations of cash, sick, or vacation time, you can help others in need. If you need more information about your badges or the Benevolence Fund, please stop by the HR resource table at the Thursday picnic. And now, I'd like to welcome our full-time staff and faculty. Please stand when your name is called and hold your applause and you know what, guys? My deepest apology for any mispronunciations. Richard Fields, Ann Nicklin, Rhonda Elmore, Cesar Majea, Joanne Schmidt, Monica Arbuckle, Connie Smith, Julie Howell, Jeffrey Hempstead, Amy Young, Aaron Bradshaw, Ryan Paluska, Coretta Giles, Dr. Tracy Morris, <laughs> that's one we all need to know, <laughs> Brenchy McLean, Sarah Collins, Daryl Danielle Farrell, Jesse Pence, Thomas Huntman, Denise Krakenberg, Gerald Painter, uh, Banter, Brian Clark, Edward Plum, Leslie Hofer, Michelle Orr, uh, I'm sorry, Michelle O, Angela Carey, A.J. Pilaris, Kelly Ross Cranes, Scott Johnson, Young Ju Sung, Tia Van, Brian Montgomery, James Noez, and Jenna Cabrera. Now, as I said these names, I said them very quickly, and you probably just bounced up and sat back down. But if your name was called, could you please stand so we can all recognize you? Again, a hearty welcome. Well, we also have some new part-time and temporary full-time faculty in the audience, and if we have any of those, would you guys please stand and be recognized as well? Again, welcome. And I always like to leave a closing line. You know, my, num my name, Marty Bloodsaw, my address, 339G, Human Resources. And uh, stop by and say hi. We have a nice little sitting area in which you can just relax before you speed throughout the day. And now, please welcome Elizabeth Carrico. Welcome to a new school year. I've come to believe that every endeavor only truly begins when the first step is trust. Whatever we start, we need the trust 
that it is worth the doing. I think in every situation, that takes shape as an individual basic question. For me, as a faculty member, that question looks like, will you hear me? I have to trust that students will hear not only what comes out of my mouth, but also what I strive to convey through the course and the design. By hearing, I really mean that ability and willingness to be here with me in this space and give it a chance. I know that it's just the first step. Hearing is not the same as understanding. Understanding is another speech for another day. I often say that teachers are eternal optimists, but that really holds true for all of us here at ICC. We stand, we speak our truth, we allow ourselves to be uncomfortable, we give what we can, we hope that it is enough, and then we do it all again. That takes trust that we're going to be heard time after time. And over time, I've seen that for many students, their basic individual question of trust starts with, will you help me? They're here because they need help. Their first step is appearing in front of us, and each has to trust that we will provide what they need. Now, their vision of what they need and our vision of what they need don't always intersect completely. That's okay. They're here with us. And that shows that they trust us. Actually, it took me a long time to recognize that layer of truth in teaching and in life. Sometimes a student gets really angry with me and complains about a test grade or the course or me. I know, it's hard to believe. And it's easy to miss that trust, however small, that exists there. So no matter how small, on the number line, we're at non-negative. That's good. We'll start there. That recognition that we have of the trust in that situation makes those next steps of connection and understanding that much easier to reach. We have many new journeys ahead of us this, sem this year full of opportunities, full of challenges. My wish for all of us is to start each with that awareness of the trust we have in one another. As always, I want to express my appreciation for everything that you do, for the students, for the college, for the community, for me. I am so grateful and so honored to work alongside each of you. Thank you. Have a great year. I'd like to welcome Dr. John Irwin to the stage. Before making my, my remarks, a couple of comments to be made. Uh, some words of appreciation. Uh, we had a great breakfast today. Let's thank the food service staff for their preparation. <laughs> I can't give higher praise to housekeeping and groundskeeping. They've done a wonderful job. And uh, when you go into your office, you go into your classroom, you're going to see there's been a lot of work in preparing those spaces for you. We're not finished. We're never quite finished uh, with getting that space ready. But I also want to thank the groundskeeping crew and the housekeeping group, please. And I don't often do this, but there's a couple of people I actually want to cite, Dennis Bisping and Leonard Smith. Uh, those two individuals, they're probably not here. Uh, they're uh, groundskeepers. And if you look at the uh, administration building and you look at what I call our front yard, our front yard's never looked so good. So Dennis and Leonard, wherever you are, I want to thank you for your great effort and your attention to detail uh, this past summer. Thank you. And I believe you'll see that throughout our campus uh, this fall. And then Elizabeth, uh, Faculty Senate President, uh, Brent Gokin, Vice President, 
as officers. I worked with them this past year. Uh, I think as faculty, you should be very proud that they do work toward uh, communication and building the trust. So Brent and Elizabeth, thank you for your leadership. I have only one topic to address this morning with you for the next few minutes, and it's what does the future of ICC look like? You know, more than 50 years ago, the state of Illinois passed the Illinois Community College Act, and this act is a statute that established uh, districts in the state of Illinois for community colleges. Uh, articulation agreements with the universities were, were set forth, and, and importantly, funding pathways were designated at that time. So in 1966, a referendum was passed locally, establishing Illinois Central College, and we opened our doors in September of 1967 to 2,400 students. At that time, the state provided a third of our operating budget. Over the years, that's become a smaller and smaller amount. Uh, one of the sources of that one-third in the past was equalization. It's somewhat complicated as a formula, but it's basically this. All of the property tax evaluations across the state and all of the enrollments across the state of community colleges is built into a formula and then it's divided among districts that qualify for additional support. It's the reason we can have some rural areas like Southeastern Community College in Harrisburg, which predominantly has the Shawnee National Forest located around it, but they can still survive because they get an equalization dollar of property tax that's predominantly carried by our Collar County Community Colleges. So it's a form of sharing, if you will. Think of it in that manner. Illinois Central College over the years has received a portion of equalization, and it's provided, obviously, um, uh, a piece of that state support over the years. Uh, but this year, uh, three weeks into the fiscal year, July 21st, the state of Illinois surprised us with a notice that our equalization was being significantly cut. When I received that notice of that million dollar cut, I was reminded of a family story. Uh, my wife Becky's from a farm and that family farm is still there and her parents still live there. Uh, Grandpa has a swing set on that farm for the kids and the grandkids and over the years we've seen all of them use the swing set. But one of the nieces, Kayla Marie, Kayla Marie loves the swing set. And when she was very little, around four or five years old, Grandpa would go out and push her on the swing. And she would enjoy that time, but she added a little bit of drama to all of it. Because as she was pushed, when she would get at the top of her swing, she would jump off the swing, land on her feet, throw her hands in the air, and go, ta-da! <laughs> Well, one day she'd had a fight with her uh, brother. She was sitting on the swing with her head down. Grandpa went out to push her on the swing. He said, would you like to be pushed on the swing? And she had her head down and she shook it. She goes, no tadas today. <laughs> and I thought of that phrase when I got that news from the state. No tadas today. So we were faced with this budget shortfall. And the sad part about it is we'd already presented a balanced budget to the board at that time. Now, I'm not sure why the state chose to delay notifying us of this change, but nonetheless, we still have to deal with it. You've heard the phrase, doing more with less, and that seems to be a cliche for community colleges and certainly for our college during the past decade. But things are complicated, and they're, they're complicated by more of uh, what we would say ingredients to our situation. It's not only the declining dollars of the state that are impacting us, but we have declining enrollments. And over the past several years, we've had double digit percentage decreases. And as of this morning, I hate to add an extra cloud, but we were 8.5% down uh, for fall. Now that came off yesterday of a drop for no pay, so we could recover 50 to 60% of that enrollment back. Um, but certainly that translates into dollars. And those dollars can be as significant as 2.1 million if that continues to be the trend for fall semester. We're already coming off of a summer of decreased credit hours as well. 
when all of that is added together, let's add a few more ingredients to this situation. There's a decline in student readiness for college. Think of your own classrooms as faculty. How many students are really prepared for the rigor of your class? We have more and more students taking schedules where there's a large portion of remedial or developmental education. And then, besides the decline funding, which we've already shown evidence of, there's also a decline in the state population. Illinois ranks as one of the highest states for out-migration. Between 1995 and 2009, according to the IRS records, Illinois had almost 900,000 people leave the state of Illinois. In a recent Gallup poll, they actually asked people if they would stay in Illinois if given a choice. 50% said they would leave <laughs> if they could. That's the highest in the nation, by the way. We're number one in something. <laughs> and then added to that is the sunsetting of the income tax as of January 1, 2015. I've already been forewarned by the Illinois Community College Board that if the income tax that's already established sunsets in 2015, January 1st, we could get an additional 18% cut from the state of Illinois. That's mid-fiscal year. So those are the ingredients that are so negative in our context that we look at for this, this particular year. So we really do have a perfect storm. Uh, it's all those ingredients together that have come into what is now a concern, obviously, for our resources, our budget. I'd like to show you two Chinese characters. These are the characters and really represent the concept of crisis. As you can see, the writing has two distinct images. The image on the left is a symbol for danger, and the image on the right is a symbol for opportunity. Well, as a community college, we really face both, this dangerous context that we're in and the opportunity to get through the situation. So these two symbols influence our future and I really think that we determine which way it will tilt. Will the future of ICC tilt toward that dangerous side or will it tilt toward the opportunities? We get to decide somewhat how that's going to happen. The Chicago mayor, Rahm Emanuel, provided some interesting advice to any, anybody facing a crisis. He said, you never let a serious crisis go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things you think you could not do before. Now, the mayor was criticized quite a bit for the first part of the quote, but there is an inherent optimism in the second part of the quote, like the Chinese symbols for crisis. The mayor sees a crisis as a catalyst that really forces people to marshal their courage and their intelligence and their perseverance to achieve more and to do more and Yes, usually with less. And this is the challenge that really faces us today. So if this is the challenge, where is our hope? Next week marks the 50th anniversary of the Beatles' first tour of America. Now, you might be asking yourself, what in the world does the Beatles' tour have to do with our facing these tough times? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that the title of one of the Beatles' songs should be our theme for this coming year. And no, it's not, I want to hold your hand. And it's not help, although help actually could work. Um, in December of 1965, the Beatles' song written by Paul McCartney was recorded on the flip side of Day Tripper. Some of you may have that. 45 somewhere, but the song has been called a Beatles masterpiece and, and reflective of Paul McCartney's eternal optimism. Uh, it was the first Beatles song to use an old harmonium, which is a, a pump organ, and it was found in the Abbey Road uh, recording studio. The song is, We Can Work It Out. And that's the theme that we need to keep in mind for this coming year. And I'd like to explain that by considering that important theme, individual word for word. 
I was reminded of how to do this with our student song. Uh, I hope I can do it well without dropping a, a preposition or a dangling participle on you. Uh, but I'm going to begin with we. And that really means all of us, the board of trustees, the cabinet officers, the faculty, the staff, the managers, every one of us. We all have to be in this together. And if we're not, then our crisis will tip toward that dangerous side and less toward the opportunity that we have in front of us. All of us, each one of us, has to find a way to cut our costs, to, to deal with a difficult budget and do better with fewer resources. And it's not easy. It's certainly, it's certainly not easy, but it is possible. Remember what Mayor Emanuel said. Uh, we have an oppor opportunity to do things that maybe we've not done before because we're in this crisis, this crunch. So each of us has to find better, more efficient, more effective ways to do things. We have to be unselfish in our approach, and we have to be willing to sacrifice for the good of our students and our community. The word can, can, that's an interesting choice of words. Can implies we have the ability. It does not mean we will, but it means we have potential. And I believe that's true of our college. I believe all of you as people of the college do have the abilities to achieve our vision of an exceptional educational experience for our students. And we have to try even when the forces external to us are aligned against us, can. It implies a kind of spirit of optimism and hope and desire to achieve. You know what I mean. It's that can-do attitude or spirit. So yes, we have the abilities, and we can cultivate the optimism to say, yes, we can. And the words work and out. I'm going to talk about these two words together. First, let's start with work. Overcoming challenges, creating new realities, being successful requires work, hard work. The inventor Thomas Edison said it really well. He said, opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and it looks like work. The opportunities that we will find in this crisis definitely will require work. It will require each of us to do something. Chicago White Sox outfielder uh, Sam Ewing put it another way. Hard work spotlights the character of people. Some turn up their sleeves, some turn up their nose, and some don't turn up at all. <laughs> but we need everyone at ICC to be people who turn up their sleeves, who are really, really ready to, to work. Now let's think about the words work and out together, a work out. Uh, you know, you can think of athletes doing these things, making your performance better. Jack Welsh, uh, when he was at General Electric, implemented a management process called the workout. And this process was used to streamline and to simplify existing processes, you know, eliminate rework and work that didn't add value and speed up decision making and empower the workforce to take ownership of problems. You know, people who work out, they often talk about shedding few unwanted pounds and building muscle and all of these workouts are the kind of things we need to be doing. Specifically, we need to spend money when it's linked to objectives. Travel, when the travel helps us to do our jobs better or serve our students more effectively and, and staff or hire more staff when we're justified and we have a real need for that position and we link it to objectives and performance measurements. And we have to shed the pounds the pounds of organizational activities that do little or nothing to help our students or our community. And we need to build the muscle of the things that we do best. Well, last is the word it. Uh, there's no antecedent to it in the song lyrics, but we can infer that it does refer to some kind of problem or issue. As we face the budgetary crisis, there may be many it's. There will be times when we have to make tough decisions. We'll have to choose doing one thing over another, choose to delay or not hire, choose to forego a conference in San Francisco and do a webinar instead. Whatever it challenges us, we can work it out. And that means together that we can eliminate the pain or the stress that unknown it creates as long as we work together and rely on our capabilities. Working it out isn't easy. 
We've seen our own students struggle with an algebraic equation when we've told them to work it out. Uh, we've seen the stress of employee conflicts when the people that are struggling or have differences are told to work it out. Uh, Ringo Starr, one of the Beatles, said it, you know, it don't come easy. His grammar was wrong, but his concept was right. None of this comes very easily. We're smart people. We ought to be able to work it out. Uh, you know, many of you know that I have a deep appreciation for Abraham Lincoln. And he said it well. He said, I'm a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, the people can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. The great point is to bring them the real facts. You know, like Lincoln, I'm a firm believer in the people, all of you here at ICC. Oh, we're not facing a national crisis. We're facing a challenge that's in our immediate world. And I believe if we share the truth with each other, we can work it out. And I believe if we find the facts, as our Six Sigma training points us toward, we can work it out. And I believe if we can depend upon each other, and if every one of you do come together right now with that, we can meet this challenge. So I'm asking you today... Embrace Paul McCartney's optimism, Rahm Emanuel's pragmatism, Thomas Edison's work ethic, and Abraham Lincoln's faith in people, and come together to work out this coming year. And if you believe like I do, when you and your colleagues are, are faced with difficulties or opportunities or issues, there's that Beatles song, that song that will come to mind this year, we can work it out. Keep it in mind. You know, we face challenges and crises, but we also have, as the Chinese characters have said, we have an opportunity as well. We can ignore these factors, but I think at our own peril, we'll tip toward danger if that's the case. But I do really believe in my heart of hearts at ICC, each one of you knows embedded in the crisis is an opportunity. We can work it out. I want to thank you. And I especially appreciate the privilege of serving you as president for another year. Thank you very much. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Tracy Morris. Tracy? I can't see anyone, but I am so thrilled to be here at ICC. I really wasn't expecting that. Um, I have been here since March and had the opportunity to meet a number of you, but there's still a lot of you that I haven't had the chance to see. So I am Tracy Morris, and I'm the Vice President of Student Services. And what's new? I am. Um, we've been trying to do quite a few things since I've arrived, and so I'm just going to kind of share. The PowerPoint is more to keep me on track more than to have a bunch of pictures up there. Um, but since I've been here, we've been faced with some enrollment challenges. And so we've tried to talk and figure out what it is that we've been doing and how can we do it a little bit better. So how many of you out in the audience are student services people? Would you please stand up? All right, first of all, yes, huge shout out for my student service people. That includes IT staff out there helping students, library staff, bookstore staff. Okay, great. They have been bombarded, especially our financial aid people. If you've walked in our hallway the last few weeks, you definitely can see that they have certainly earned every penny. We've been trying something a little new. The walk-in Wednesday concept was working, but students we couldn't get enough students in in one day. So you may have seen our mailings, billboards, radio ads for express enrollment. So very few of our student services people are here right now because they're trying to help with express enrollment. So just wanted everyone to know that these are going on. We are going to have some hours on Saturday to help last minute students. We purposely didn't broadcast that because then they would all wait until Saturday. Um, but I'm really thankful for those people who are willing to give up that last Saturday before classes to come on in and get our students ready to go. Um, one of the things that's changing that really has an impact on all of you is our student of concern process. How many of you have heard of Form A, Form B, Form C? How many of you know what each of those forms is for? Yeah, me neither. So one of the things that I've been able to do, I'm going to talk about my reorganization in a moment, but Emily points, Emily, are you here? I saw you here somewhere. Are you? Stand up, please. 
Okay, if you don't already know Emily, um, she was previously one of our Six Sigma Black Belts, came out of Enrollment Services, and she is our new Interim Dean of Students. She's going to be your first contact for Student of Concerns issues. She has worked really, really hard the last two months. We've taken three forms down to one. Yay! <laughs> that form is going to be online as well, and we're going to be able to track a little bit better. Our point is that when you see something that gives you pause, behavior's a little odd, behavior is outright disruptive or dangerous or scary, we have a process for that. So Emily and I are going to do a session on Thursday at 1 to talk a little bit more, more about that. She's made some beautiful folders that talk through the process, that explain what each of those types of students are, to really get that information in your hands, whether you're a faculty member or a staff. So where this comes from is, if you remember the tragedies of Virginia Tech, one of the largest concerns was that there was no central repository for those concerns. And so by bringing all the forms in through Emily and through the Dean of Students office, it may be a little thing that happens in financial aid, and then a little thing that happens in a physiology classroom, and then another little thing that happens in the cafeteria. And we start to connect the dots, and we see a pattern, and then we elevate it. So really important, we really, really need all of you to help us. So the form is on this new website. There's some of that information. We're going to get that in your hands this week. If you have questions, come talk to me. Come talk to Emily. Our goal is to keep everybody safe and to nip these problems in the bud before they become bigger problems. There's Emily's picture in case you couldn't see her. You're welcome, Emily. All right. Some of you have heard, especially those in my student service area, we are doing some reorganization. And what this really came from was a desire to streamline the processes for the students is where this really comes from. So those of you who want to come down and talk to me, I'll talk to you for an hour, two hours, student development theory, whatever it is that you want to know. But we're going to be coming into three basic areas, enrollment management, student development, and student success. Student development is actually going to be under Emily in the Dean of Students role. She didn't want a title this long, so it's Dean of Students. But really, it's going to encompass our uh, counseling and advising areas, testing, access services, and then all of the code of conduct issues that go along with that. Enrollment management is pretty much what you think it's going to be. Transactional, registration, records, admissions processing, financial aid, and student accounting, as well as veterans affairs. Um, Beth McLean will be stepping into that role in September. And then student success is the one that I'm probably the most excited about from a change in perspective. That's going to take basically the idea of a first year experience and a second year experience for our students. So from the point of orientation, bringing them through our student life and engagement orientation. And then second year experience more with the career services and the transfer center. And then throughout all of that, a really increased focus on retention. That's where we need your help as well. Um, I'm doing a session. I'm doing a couple of them. I'm new, and I don't know how to say no yet. Um, I'm doing a session later to talk about AWARE rosters. And yes, we're going to talk about AWARE rosters and why they're important. But I really want to get feedback from faculty on how can we better improve our retention processes. How can we in student services reach out and help the students so that you can do your job and, and teach and be in the classroom? So we're really excited about some of the um, opportunities in that. Another one of our big changes, for those of you who are familiar with our Connect program, I know Christina's here, I, I saw her earlier. Connect plus college transitions equals transfer center. So I apologize, Elizabeth, my math is probably not really one plus one equals two, but we're trying to take the concept of Connect, which is a really high touch environment that really brings students in, and we're bringing that across the college for all of our transfer students. So they've worked really hard, we've got a new logo, we're doing a little bit of shuffling upstairs, but we're really trying to reach out to all of our students in that second year who are planning to transfer. Our ICC students do as well or better than other community college students when they go on. We know that. That's directly due to the impact that our faculty and staff have here. How can we help them with those little tricky spots? Some of our um, programs like education are getting tougher and tougher and tougher to negotiate. So we're really going to try to give the support to the advisors through our transfer center. On that note, how many of you actually picked up your little card outside for the our community college story? Okay, if you didn't do that, if you attended a community college, please share that with us. We want to promote that. 
Um, I'm extremely proud to be a community college graduate. Um, three of my four parents attended community college, but I was the first one to graduate with a degree and then to go on. So we want to hear your stories. Margo, Christina, and Mindy, we're really looking forward to putting those out there as Community College Month comes up in October. Okay, who's ready to exercise? Woohoo! This isn't in my area, but I was given the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, if you haven't met Jenna, is Jenna here? She might be over there minding the, minding the storefront. Um, they're doing a little twist this week. So if you go in this week during Celebration of Learning and sign up, you get a month for free. Yay! Go twice a week over the course of the year, 100 visits. You'll get half of it back as part of our wellness initiative. They have classes, they have individual workouts, they have lots of great things in the Cougarplex. Stop by and get more information. So let me see a show of hands. How many of you are already doing some form of membership at the Cougarplex? Awesome, okay, I'll be joining you. So help get me out and over there. The last thing that I'm really excited about, how many of you know what this is? You better know, Troy. Arbor Hall. Arbor, if you were there when I was first hired, uh, Mr. Buddy took me on a tour, and they were cutting big holes in the brickwork in, on North Campus. And I'm like, wow, what am I getting myself into? It is gorgeous. Um, the windows, this is the entry desk at Arbor Hall. So we're hoping that our staff is going to be moving in this fall in October, and then as we begin our transition at North. So what we're going to be doing is looking at the way we serve students a little bit differently. Not really a one-stop model, but it's that kind of an idea where we're taking a student from point A all the way through enrollment, depending on where point A is. So it's really exciting for us not only just to have a building, but to have a chance to look at our services. Maybe there will be some changing in our roles to try to help with that budget situation as well. So we're really looking at our practices. The last thing, if you have your cell phone, you want to take a picture of that so you know where to find me, that's awesome. Um, I really look forward to meeting you. Some of you have taken the time to walk into my office and say hello. Unfortunately, some of you have come into my office with student issues already. I'm glad to help you with that. Um, but our role in student services really, truly is to support you in whatever it is that we can do. If that's helping a student negotiate a late withdrawal process, if that is helping deal with a discipline issue, if that is I have nowhere else to go, what do I do? That's what we're here for. Jennifer Ballard is my admin assistant. She knows where I'm at at all times, and if you need us, please don't hesitate to call. The last thing I get to do is I have the opportunity to um, introduce Elaine Goslin. I did not see Elaine here for the first three months and two weeks. I met her two weeks ago, and now I see her everywhere. So I'm really excited about the great things she's doing with um, alumni, and I'll turn it over to you, Elaine. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Good morning, everyone. In June of 2014, the ICC Alumni Association celebrated its one-year anniversary. We are grateful to the many people who have helped make this happen. We have 172 members, and they range in age from their 20s to well into their 90s. ICC alums are contributing to society in central Illinois, as well as throughout the U.S. and across the globe. The Alumni Association strives to build a meaningful community through lifelong engagement with ICC. I have been moved by the intense loyalty and gratitude towards ICC expressed by alums. Many of them have talked about very specific memories of professors and staff whose deep caring led to changes in their lives that are benefiting them to this day. What does this new Alumni Association mean to you? Why is it important? The strategic goals of the Alumni Association are to support ICC alums as advocates of the college and lifelong learners who embrace a culture of community service, philanthropy, and student support. This means we work with many of you across the college. We are a gateway to a growing alumni community with a great deal of knowledge and experience they are willing to share with faculty, staff, and students. The staff of the alumni office can be the connectors, helping you make use of these resources. We can help bring you and the alums together in all sorts of constructive and innovative ways. Last year, we were asked to invite alums back to campus for a faculty in-service breakout session. 
we co-sponsored an alum-led webinar for students highlighting the importance of market research. At other times, alums spoke to students about skills all employers are looking for and using LinkedIn beyond the profile. This year, we have been asked to invite alums back to campus to share their experiences of transferring to a four-year school. We know alums are interested in you. They have told us let us help promote your professional pursuits, your special event or programs that welcome alums back to campus. Alums are interested in your work, your students, and the things that you are doing that have an impact on the local community and beyond. Send us information and we will work with marketing to be the most effective with our online and offline delivery systems. Please know that we have a very targeted audience interested in you. We ask you for your help. Help spread the word that ICC has an alumni association. Invite alums to visit our website or send us an email. We'll have a table at the picnic on Thursday for more information. You may be in touch with alums who are not yet in our working database. Share their current contact information with us. If you know of an alum or alums who will be on campus or at an event in the community, please let us know. As an example, last year we were invited by faculty and staff to the Livestock Judging Contest in Henry, the Jim Maloof Celebration, and the Men's Basketball Hall of Fame event, all off campus, but with many ICC alums in attendance. Who is an ICC alum? anyone who has completed a certificate or 30 credit hours. That means, incidentally, that a huge number of you are ICC alums. In fact, over 40% of ICC employees are also alums. This True Blue Ambassador Group will receive more information about the Alumni Association in September. Together, we are building a vibrant Community College Alumni Association. Its members are truly your legacy as faculty and staff. And by working together and fulfilling ICC's mission, we can help ensure that this amazing and strong resource continues to serve for years and years to come. In closing, I would like to share the words of an ICC alum with you. I was able to grow into the person I am today because of the different professors and staff members at ICC. They helped me accomplish the goal of getting through to the next level of education. I had the great privilege of knowing many great people who work at ICC, who believed I could achieve anything I set my mind to. When I asked for help, I received it. ICC truly changed my life. I wish you all a wonderful academic year Thank you, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Megan Byard from the ICC Educational Foundation. Good morning. My name is Megan Byard, and I am a development officer here in the Educational Foundation. I don't know about all of you, but I'm ready to have the students back on campus. There's something about walking through the halls, seeing those lines in the bookstore and enrollment services that gets me excited for the coming year. It takes me back to my college years and that excitement as the new year is beginning. As the campus fills up with students eager to st start or continue their educational journey, we as faculty and staff have the opportunity to make sure they receive the best college experience. After all, that is why we're here, right? To serve the students. The mission of Illinois Central College is through learning, minds change. We believe by changing minds, we can change the world. The Educational Foundation is continually raising money to ensure the students have every opportunity to learn. Whether it be from scholarships to technology to building improvements, we do it all to make sure the students receive the best college education possible. As stated in the mission, we are here to change the world one student at a time. So please join me this year in making a world of difference during our annual employee campaign, raising money for the ICC Educational Foundation and the Heart of Illinois United Way. Every dollar donated to the Educational Foundation goes right back into the college and the students we serve. Whether you choose to support the building and renovation of the Student Center at ICC North, 
a specific scholarship to help a student attend ICC, or the Student Emergency Fund that assists students when an emergency arises, or any of the many other funds we have. They all have a direct impact on our students. Making a gift is easy. You simply fill out a pledge card, letting us know how much you'd like to donate and where you'd like to designate your gift. If you'd like your donation to come directly from your paycheck, then you can leave the rest to us in payroll. Each and every gift is, an, is important, no matter the size. Additionally, we would love to support our students in all areas of life, but unfortunately, we do not have the resources to do so. So please also consider making a gift to the United Way, which supports several local social service agencies that assist many of our students. Gifts can be designated to specific organization the United Way supports or to the United Way as a general donation. As I mentioned previously, one of the ways the foundation supports our students is through scholarship. We hear time and time again from students how grateful they are for the donors that support their education. One student said, the gift is more than monetary. It gives me hope and confidence that everything I am striving for will be accomplished. Another says, your gift played an important role in my making the pres president's list with a 4.0 GPA in both the fall 2013 and spring 2014 semesters, and for that, I thank you. You, along with other donors, give students the hope and encouragement to better themselves through education. I believe in you. This is what a scholarship says to its recipient. And another says, I would like to say how much I appreciate your donation towards my education, and I hope that in time I can utilize what I gain through this to give back to the community in the same spirits you graciously, graciously aided me. And lastly, I can't show my appreciation enough for this scholarship. The only thing I can do is finish what I started and show you that you made a sound investment in my educational goals. And the list goes on and on. But today I have with me the recipient of the Melvin O. and Lorraine N. Maley Scholarship to tell us her scholarship story. Natalie? My name is Natalie Garialdi. I'm 19 years old and I'm currently a sophomore at ICC. My major is nursing. I chose nursing because when I was little, I was in and out of the hospital due to abuse or my parents would overdose. No matter what happened or how bad the injury was, the nurses always helped me and, looked up, and I always looked up to them. When I got older, I learned that nursing would be a great career opportunity and would set a good example for my younger brothers. I received the Melvin O. and Lorraine M. Maley Scholarship to help me reach this goal. It gives me chills to think that someone I do not know is willing to give me such a precious gift. I cannot thank the donors enough. I chose ICC because it is affordable and has a great nursing program that transfers to the OSF St. Francis Medical Center, the hospital I'm currently working at. My freshman year was amazing. The teachers always helped me, made themselves available to help me whenever I needed it, and the math lab was always there to help me sit down for the hours when I was struggling with college algebra. Um, what I really love about ICC is that it doesn't matter who you are or what you look like or where you come from, Every student and every faculty member is kind and supportive. My interest in school started around second grade when I learned that school could be my escape from yelling, fighting, and neglect in my house. I am the oldest of four children. My dad died when I was 10, and my mom followed five years later. From then on, I was passed from home to home. But one thing I remember that never changed was my love for education. When my parents died, I had no idea what I was going to happen to my family and did not know how I was going to attend college. All through high school, I wrote two jobs to pay for everything, and I had and saved up extra so then I could move out when I graduated. I learned that living on your own is harder than I thought and ended up working three jobs. I had no idea how I was going to afford college, let alone have time for school. This scholarship allowed me to quit one job and come back 20 hours in another one. I have more time to focus on school. I'm less stressed and healthier because I'm getting more sleep. And my dog, Chunky, enjoys me being home more. <laughs> This scholarship gives me hope that my dreams of becoming a nurse will become true. It also allows me to continue setting a good example for my younger brothers and to never give up, no matter how impossible something seems. I can never thank you enough for everything ICC has done for me, from the generous scholarships to the programs and classes that prepare me for the next school I'll be attending. The support never seems to end. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your love and generosity will never forget, be forgotten or taken for granted. Thank you, Natalie, for sharing your story with us. Every student has their own unique story, just as we have ours. When the pledge card comes, I want you to think of a time when someone selflessly helped you or your family. I will be visiting each of you in, the in your department meetings over the next month to distribute the pledge cards, and I challenge you to take your United Way pin and fill in a meaningful pledge this year if you haven't given in the past, or maybe put a couple extra dollars if you have given before, or consider joining the 1% Club. I'm a proud member, and I hope you become a member too. 
Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Help us make a world of difference for our students this year. Thank you. Announcements. Most of my announcements will be um, saved for tomorrow, uh, but I do want to say a few things about what's happening in academic affairs. Uh, as most of you know, Tom Pilot retired this past summer. Uh, he has been uh, replaced on an interim basis by Joe Bergman. Uh, we intend to do a search this fall and have uh, Tom replaced by January. The search for Michael Boyd's replacement is going to take a little longer. Uh, we did have a failed search this summer, and uh, because of the budget crisis, we are going to put off refilling that position until next summer. Another change I want to make you aware of is that um, Terry Punky and Val Moore have sort of switched places. Um, Val has gone back to faculty, and Terry uh, Punky is uh, serving as the interim nursing program director. Yeah. And while you're clapping, did you know that uh, Terry earned her master's of science in nursing this past spring? So let's congratulate her for that. And before I forget, a few other things. Uh, I want to point out there's an art exhibit out in the lobby there. Beautiful art created by our very talented art faculty. So uh, be sure and check that out before you leave. I want to thank uh, Janice Kinsinger for putting to this week together. This is really a, a challenging, time-consuming task. Um, and I don't know about you, but I thought today's session was the best one ever. I've been here. This is my fifth now. And uh, I just was really impressed and thank Thank all of the speakers for what you shared with us. Um, I also want to mention Arbor Hall. Uh, Tracy mentioned Arbor Hall is going to be opening soon. My office will be moving into Arbor. I'm currently located in Hickory on the North Campus, but I'll be moving into Arbor. Uh, Bruce Buddy assures me that there's uh, an, an elevator shaft that he's uh, arranged um, with a desk in there, and uh, I might even be a bookshelf or two. Uh, you know, with apologies to Dr. Irwin, um, he talked about the Beatles, and you know, Beatles are as good as they get, right? Uh, but I just want to end with a trivia question uh, about Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, <laughs> the first song that you did by, was by Weird Al, was it not? Okay. Weird Al um, made his first video back in the late 1970s, and I'm wondering if anyone out there can tell me what that song was. There was one before that. My Bologna, that's what it is. Based on the next song, My Sharona, it was My Bologna. So. You, you win the Bologna Award today. <laughs> and uh, again, with apologies to Dr. Irwin, I have one more ta-da. Well, there is a ta-da today, and that ta-da is we've got one more performance from the vocal jazz uh, under the direction of Julie Clemens. Ta-da. Out of the tree of life, I just picked me a plum. You came along and everything's starting to hum. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? You came along and everything's starting to shine. Wait till the warm up sun underway. Wait till our lips have met. Wait and see. Wait till you see that sunshine. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? Yeah. The best is yet to come, come the day you're oh mine. You're mine. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be just fine? You've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. No, you won't. Oh, ba da 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 da